Hey everybody, welcome to another video in our series on how to solve magic cubes, also called puzzle cubes, also called Rubik's cubes. We have solved up to this point a 2x2, 3x3, 4x4, 5x5, 6x6, 7x7. Now we're going to do the biggest cube we have ever done so far, and that would be this giant guy. Very heavy. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. This is an 8 by 8 by 8 magic cube. Now, if you are thinking about tackling this behemoth of a cube, I highly recommend you know how to do every cube from 3x3 three three all the way up to 6x6 six six and 7x7. Seven seven. You can check out all of my other videos on solving 2x2 two two all the way up to 7x7 seven seven in order to find out the proper algorithms and steps it takes to solve this thing. This video is going to assume you have seen all of the other videos so far. Um, it's going to be a bit more of an advanced lesson. So I'm going to assume you know many algorithms and you're going to see the algorithms in play in this video. Just a quick note on the cube that I'm using today. This is a Shengshu cube and it is different than the Rubik's company. It is different than the V cube. The great thing about Shengshu cubes is that they move pretty well. They slide nicely. They're nicely lubricated and you can always lubricate them more if you want. They also specialize in making higher order cubes. So for example, if you're looking for a Rubik's brand cube that is eight by eight, you will never find that. They stop at five by five, which is called the professor's cube. So if you want a higher order cube, like a eight by eight, seven by seven, uh, 13 by 13, you're going to have to look for other companies other than the Rubik's company. And also it's a stickered cube. So these are stickers and one problem with stickers, especially with higher order cubes, they sometimes peel off very, very easily on higher order cubes. Quick example, you've got my V cube here, my V cube seven. Um, if you notice it in the last video, there is a peeling sticker. So stickered cubes are not always good. Um, and there are some benefits to stickerless cubes, although there is an increase in price if you're buying a stickerless cube. Now, uh, if you're solving a Rubik's cube, I assume that you know how math works, and uh, an 8x8 cube is an even-numbered cube, which means we're going to have to follow the principles of the 4x4 and the 6x6 cube. So keep that in mind. You're going to have to do everything we have done so far, and that means we're going to have to do um, centerpieces, edges, corners, as well as different types of edge parity that you have seen in like the 6x6 and 7x7 seven seven and 5x5, five five, as well as corner parity, because corner parity only happens on even numbered cubes, and this is an even number cube. And just one more quick note on algorithms, um, higher order cubes have algorithms and they are harder than the 3x3 three three cubes algorithms. If you are working with a higher order cube, it might be easier if you learn how to move certain pieces in certain ways, um, and as opposed to just remembering an algorithm, which can be confusing because notations can be difficult as you increase the number of total layers. So I'm going to avoid using any kind of uh, inverted, up inverted, left inverted uh, notations in favor of directional movements. Um, and I hope this makes it easier to solve this cube for you. One thing about these higher order cubes, if you know what you're doing, this might take you about 90 minutes to complete. The seven by seven takes about an hour and 20 minutes to complete. Uh, I would average for every new layer, I would add about 10 minutes to the solving time or more. It depends on how good you are at cubing. Most of your time will be spent solving the edge pieces. Uh, they take a long, long time. But once you get past the edge pieces, it, get, it gets really, really simple. We are going to reduce this from an eight by eight into a seven by seven, then into a six by six, and then into a five by five, and so on and so forth until we get it down to a three by three cube. And once we do that, by making all of these edges the same color and these two different colors, once we have three layers, we can solve it just like a three by three cube. So without further ado, let's mix this guy up. Okay, wow, that took longer than I thought it would. Now that we have mixed everything up, what we're going to do is we're going to solve one centerpiece, which means we're solving six by six 
centerpieces for one face. This will take a long time. Even if you know how to do this, it still takes a while to accomplish. Another thing you should remember with higher order cubes, like a like an eight by eight, if you're turning it, that's great, but make sure when you're turning it that everything is lined up properly because if you turn it poorly and you get frustrated and turn it really hard, this thing can explode. <laughs> all of your pieces can go all over the place. And it might be easy to dismantle and reassemble a 3x3 three three or a 4x4 four four cube, but to dismantle and reassemble an 8x8 eight eight cube is even more torture than solving it with algorithms. So remember, this is an even numbered cube. So your face colors are not going to be the same. They can move. There's no fixed centerpiece. So that means we have to remember what our colors are. And if you're doing an eight by eight cube, you should know by now what colors are opposite what colors. So for example, blue is against green and yellow is against white. Um, keeping that in mind, I'm going to choose I think we're going to go with um, blue. We're going to go with blue today. Uh, you can pick whatever face you want to begin with. Um, I'm going to choose blue. And the way we're going to do it is this. We're going to start with these center rows. okay? Um, and we are going to expand them either this way up and down or this way uh, horizontally. It's up to you how you want to do it. But start with the center and move outwards as opposed to starting with the outer parts and coming in this way. If you're solving your very first center face, it does not matter um, how you do it. It's just a question of logic. You know what? You want to have pieces going together in a straight line. You can do that in any way you choose. Um, once you get to solving the opposite face, then you'll need some algorithms. But for now, um, let's just solve um, as many of these center pieces as we can. So let's look for a center piece to match with maybe these two. Okay, so we're going to go this line first. So one and two, or one and two, whatever, it doesn't matter. So let's first find a piece that'll fit here. And all we're doing is we're looking in these center squares to look for a blue piece. Here's a blue piece, so this will fit with this one. So all we need to do is make sure it is on this side of the face, and so when we rotate everything, it'll show up here. Right now it's here. We want it over here where the red one is. So we're just gonna turn this face once. And now it's where it belongs. And if we turn the top enough times, it will match up with the blues. And there you go. So now we have one, two, and three lined up. Let's see if we can get rid of these to make it a bit easier so you can see what we have lined up so far um, and let's try to find this piece so we're looking for a blue piece anywhere in here 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 or maybe here so let's see if we can find a piece that can fit there this might work let's check will it fit will it go in the position yes it will so let's just bring it over and match it with our other blues. So, so now they're lined up here, and perfect. Now we have one strip complete. Okay. Uh, so now let's look for another strip. We'll look for this one now. So what we're going to do again is we're going to look for the two center pieces, line them up, and then bring them with the other pieces here. Center piece, no center piece, no center piece. Here are two centerpieces. In fact, these are all lined up. That's like really that's really great. Um, here's what we can do. One will not fit this one, and this one will. So let's see if we can get these two to line up with this. So we're going to make sure that we don't interfere with this one. Turn it like so. Bring these around. Okay, now bring these back around like that, and with this still okay, rotate, and now we have one more strip, okay? Uh, this one, we can actually probably find one more strip and line up this. Three away, okay, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, and now we line up with 
this one. Great. So now that's taken care of. And now we have another strip here. So let's see if we can put a piece over here that we must have moved at one point. Um, one, two. Great. And now, if I just rotate one like this, and then I rotate these two, now we have two strips done. Now we can continue the process. We're going to get away some of the blue. Okay. Uh, let's look. Let's work with these two. So let's line up one that can go here. That cannot. Okay. That one can go here. here that needs to go here without messing this up I'm just going to send the edge upwards okay rotating it so that it's out of the way and then I'm gonna bring this blue back where it belongs which is similar to all of the other higher order cubes so that's solved that's solved and we bring one up and now we have blue completely solved now that you've solved the blue face, um, I hope you did solve the blue face. You can solve whatever color you want, but we're going to solve the opposite color now, which should be, of course, green on this side. So it's gonna we're gonna go blue and then green, and just as usual, we're going to go blue, green, and then flip the cube like this, and then do 
a clockwise or counterclockwise circle for the other edges. So because every time we move like this, it doesn't get affected, we want to hold the cube so that the solved face is on the bottom. Okay, and now we're going to solve the green face in the same way that we solved the blue face. So I'm going to start with the centers and then go outwards instead of going like this. Okay, so I have three already solved and one right here. So I'm just going to solve this one and this one to complete this face. I'm going to send this piece up here without interfering with the blue face at the bottom by just doing what we've done all the time with higher order cubes. We're going to send it what we want upwards. Okay, so now it's here. Now we want to bring it back downwards because this blue has to go back where it belongs. So we need to rotate this out of the way so that when we bring it down, we don't mess it up again. So up, rotate away and then send back down. And now everything's okay here, and everything's okay up here. Okay, so now let's solve the last piece here, and then we can move on to the next strip.
Okay, one more green strip down. So we have one more green strip left. We want to make sure that we line up the green strips and then send it upwards. So here we go. Send it up, rotate, and bring back down. So up, rotate, rotate. Now we have junk, and bring the junk down. And you have completed blue and the green centerpieces. Once you've solved blue and you've solved green is to turn the cube like this. And we're going to be working completely like this now, not touching green or blue. I know I said green here and blue here. Don't worry about it. I'm very tired. <laughs> and we are going to solve the faces one and two, and then one and two. We don't want to solve one and its opposite. If you solve the opposite, you can absolutely solve this cube but you are going to tear your hair out because it's going to be even harder because you have to double up every move and every algorithm you currently know in order to just move things from here all the way to here instead of just from here to here. I'm going to solve two faces in the same way I solved these two faces here. So uh, you don't need to see it again. I'm just going to rush through it. And then when we get to the last two faces, that's when the fun starts. Okay, uh, so when you weren't looking, I was busy solving the yellow face. And uh, the key was blue is here, green is on the opposite side. So we have yellow here, and we have red here, and we have orange here, and we have white down here. So I solved the yellow face completely for the centerpiece at least. And then I moved on to the uh, orange side, which is right over here. So I've almost completed. I just wanted to show you the last set of moves before I solve this strip entirely. Uh, if you are stumped, it's the same thing that we were doing for blue and green, but uh, just in case you want a little bit more practice, you want to see this done a little bit more times, a few more times, sorry, um, let's do that. So we have one more piece left. I have this piece to match up with these pieces. So I've moved all of these together, and now I wanted to line up these ones so that this piece matches on this face. So when I move it up, it'll line up. So to do that, I'm going to move it up, but I'm going to mess up the orange as well as the yellow face. So in order to, to avoid um, messing things up completely, you have to do the following algorithm, which you should know. You want to send everything upwards, okay? Then you want to rotate it away so that there's nothing to send down on this side. And we can bring back the orange downwards. And now we have this orange just by itself, and it should go here. In order to move this piece, what we want to do is we want to line up one orange strip with this orange strip. So we want an orange strip here going all the way down, all the way down here. So instead of moving it into this gap, we're moving it into this gap. And then we're going to rotate it out of the way and then send this piece back up. So again, you've done this many times before. I'm just going to move this strip down. Okay. And I'm going to move it down one more. Okay. So now this is the strip we're moving. Okay. And then we're going to rotate this and rotate. Now that this strip is here, it's lining up with all of the mess so far. And then we just bring this orange strip back here. So one and two. And there you go. Completely solved orange face, blue face, yellow face, green face. Now all we have to do is the white and red face. Now this is going to be very similar and familiar to many of you that have seen my previous videos. Uh, we're going to solve the white and red face together at the same time. Um, so this is orange, this will be red, and this will be white. Okay. And our job is to get as much white over here as possible, and then get as much red over here as possible. Then we can do the algorithm that is considered, you know, my favorite algorithm out of all of the algorithms because it's so helpful. Um, we're going to take this red piece because it doesn't belong here and it's completely solved. We're going to bring it up here. And in doing so, we're going to take some of the white if we can. So we're going to move it like so. Okay. Uh, is there anything over here? Lots of white on this strip. So we're going to leave this strip here and it's going to swap with this one. So here we go. Sending the red up. 
rotate, rotate, lots of white here, and then we bring that downwards. Okay, so we have lots of white over on this side and lots of red over on this side. Now, the algorithm we're going to use, you've heard me say this many times before, um, it is, we're going to work with strips, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're going to go down and then over, and then down and then back over, and then we're going to re reverse it up and then over, and then up and then back over. Um, this algorithm will move any piece that is in the same position relative on either side. It's going to move that piece with this piece. They're going to flip. Okay, um, You can do this with any tile that you see here. Um, if it's in the top corner, you're going this way clockwise. If it's in this top corner, you're going counterclockwise. Okay, um, I'm going to show you this algorithm uh, one more time. You've probably seen it many times before, but remember uh, this side is going to be white. So let's take some of these reds out of here. I'm going to start with the easy one. We have a red in the top corner, and let's see if we can get a white in this same top corner. Here's one. And we're going to put that there, and we're going to flip these two pieces so that red is here and white is here. So the way we're going to do it is this. Bring this strip down once, and then bring the front face, just this strip, over one time. And then we're going to bring, wherever it moved, we're going to bring it over here and move that strip downward once, and then back over. And then we're going to do the same upwards and then over, and then upwards and then back over. Okay. Because this is an 8x8 cube, there are many pieces, and you have to remember how this piece is traveling. Where does it land? So watch me as I do this. Uh, first, we're going to bring one strip down. If we don't want to break our cube, bring our one strip down. Okay, down. So here's the piece. Then it's going to go over. Then it goes over. And then here's the piece. So this is the strip we're going to move down. Okay. So down, over, down, and then back over. Okay. And if you're forgetting what strip you, you've moved, just look up here. It should be white and red, but you see yellow and yellow. So we move this one and we move this one. So when we're moving it back up, we're only going to work with these two. So now we go up and then over. And then we go up, and then back over. And now you have a white piece here instead of red. And that's how it's done. Okay, so uh, the reason I like this algorithm so much is because you could do it in so many different ways. Let's look at, for example, uh, again, this is white. This, is, this should be red. So I have two white pieces here, and I have two red pieces here. I'm going to try to move these two at the same time. So instead of moving one strip and over, I'm going to move both strips. The interesting thing here is that they're in the center. So the question is, do I go this way or do I go this way? The answer is actually easy. Either way is okay. So um, I'm going to do it the same way we've learned before. So we're going to bring these two layers down instead of one. Down. Okay. So here are the pieces. And then we're going to go over, okay? So we're going clockwise. And then the pieces are here now. So we go down. And then we go back over, okay? And if you're forgetting which ones we moved, we moved these two and we moved this one. So these two are going to go back up, up and then over, and then this strip is going up, and then back over. And now look, you've moved two pieces instead of one. So this is a very, very efficient way to move pieces around between the two faces, and you're solving both at the same time.
you've done it. If you've made it this far, all of your center pieces have been solved. So if you thought that took a while, just wait until you get to these edge pieces, which are going to take even longer. Um, it's just a little repetitive. That's the only issue. So if you know how to solve an edge piece, you can solve out these edge pieces. Um, if you know how to solve a 4x4 four four cube and a 5x5 five five cube, uh, similar to the 7x7 seven seven cube, you can solve all the issues that you're going to encounter here. Um, this is going to require an extra step found only in even number cubes because an even number cube can be split in half. So you will encounter an issue where you have to deal with that. Um, other than that, it's going to be the same as all of the edge other edge pieces that you've seen in my previous videos. So we're going to start with the center pieces, connecting these two edges and then moving outwards as usual. So we're going to start with, let's say, uh, yellow and uh, green and red, uh, and we're going to look for another green and red piece in the center. So let's look for that. Here's one. So we're going to bring it over to meet this one. And if you notice, you have green here and red on this face, and you have green here and red on this face. That's exactly what we want. So we want red here and we want green here so that when we cut this cube to bring them together, they match. So one and two. So we're gonna cut like so. Then we're going to bring this upwards, send it to the back, and then bring this stuff back down. So cut in half, then send upwards, then send to the back, and then bring back down, and reverse your process. And there is your fixed edge piece. Keep going around the whole cube, solving the center edge pieces first. Oh, this one's already solved. Great. Uh, and then keep on moving on. Uh, I'm going to do another one for you, so let's do white and red. Look for white and red. The other white and red usually close by. Nope. Nope. Wow, I missed that. How did I not see that? Okay, so if you have a white and red, and you have red here, and you have red here, big problem, you do not want this. You want this one to be white, and you want it where this piece is. So how do we get that? We just send this one up, we twist the front face one time, and then we twist the top face one time. And now you can see that this one is right where it belongs. Okay, And that's a very easy step to take just to fix your edges. Now we can do exactly what we were doing before. So twist once, send it upwards, send it to the back, and now bring this down. And that's it. So I'm going to uh, rush through a few more of them, and then I will come back to you once I solve the majority, and we run into any possible issue. So just a quick example of one possible issue. Uh, let's say I have blue and red here, and I have blue and red here. Oops. Okay. <laughs> uh, blue and red here. Blue and red here. So I'm going to fix it. Okay. Rotate, and then rotate. So now I have blue and red here, and blue and red here good to go. So I'm going to fix these edges, send once, send it back up, but every time I try to rotate something and bring it down, they're already solved, okay? Um, this one's already solved, this one's already solved, and so on. So this one is not solved. This will happen to you. You have to make sure that whatever you bring down, okay, like this one, for example, is not fixed yet. If it's not fixed yet, you can bring it down and then you can cut it back, okay? If you don't do that, you will run into a problem. Um, but just make sure that whatever you're cutting is already messed up in the first place. Right here, you have yellow and red, and you have yellow and red, okay? But when you rotate, and now you have it in the right position, you notice that this one is orange and yellow, and this one is also orange and yellow. That means these are the only two pieces remaining that are messed up, okay? If these are the only ones left that are messed up, everything here is already solved, which means nothing can be brought down and cut properly. And this only happens with 
an 8x8 eight eight cube and a 4x4 four four and all of the even number cubes, um, what's going to happen is we need to solve with an algorithm this problem here. So what we're going to do first, this one is red and yellow. We want this one, bottom one, to also be red and yellow. So we need to get this back down here. How do we do that? Send it up, rotate the front face, and rotate the top face, just like before. And now it reappears where it once was. Okay. So now that you have this color and this color matching, okay, you can now cut the whole thing in half in the following uh, algorithm. So look carefully as we move this around. We're going to take the whole bottom half. We're going to cut it in half and twist it one time, like so. Then we're going to use our right hand, and then we're going to rotate the right face like this. Then we're going to take the whole front face, rotate it backwards like that. And then we're going to take the top face or the up face, rotate it one time. Then we're going to take this right face, bring it back down. This is clearly not the right way, so we're going to bring this back down here. And then we're just going to turn it so that the oranges match. And now, not only have you fixed your red and yellow side, you've also fixed your orange and yellow side. So, now your edges are complete, and that is the one extra step that you will only do with even numbered cubes. You will never do this with a 5, or a 7, or a 9, or 11, or whatever it is. Only even numbered cubes have to do that algorithm. And you'll, you'll see it in this video, the uh, 6x6 video, and also the 4x4 video. You can now move on to the next edge. So you can choose between this one or this one but uh, it's up to you. It doesn't really matter which one. And we're just going to solve them in the exact same way. We're going to pretend that this is a three-edged cube now. So we have one, two, and three, and we're going to link one more layer. Once we solve this layer, we can move to this layer, and then the bottom layer, and then the top layer. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, let's do yellow and orange, and let's look for another yellow and orange piece. We have a yellow and orange piece like this one. So let's bring it ugh, around, bring it down, okay? So now we have yellow-orange here, and we have yellow-orange here. So let's do exactly what we know how to do. We're going to twist it like so, send it up first. If we can slide the cube, send it upwards, send it to the back, and then bring it back down. And now you've solved your first three-pieced edge. And let's keep on going with other edges. So let's do blue and orange for one more example. Blue and orange would be right here. So if I bring it down here, it's upside down. You can solve it like this, but you'll have to do some kind of uh, some mirror algorithms where you have to do it instead of uh, up and you know back like this. It might be down and back like that. So that could be a bit confusing. If you don't want to do that, just look for another edge piece. Instead of this one, look for the other blue and orange piece, which you will find right over here. So this blue and orange piece will probably work. So I'm going to try with this one. Okay, so see how this is blue here and this is blue here? Well, let's do the algorithm that we know. Send this one up, turn the front face, and then turn the top face. And now you have blue here, orange over here. So let's fix this one again. We're just going to cut, send up, send to the back, and then reverse the process. Okay, and now I'm going to rush through a few more of them uh, just to save some time, and then I will come back when I run into some problems. So here's your first error that you might encounter. Um, you have to solve green and orange, okay? And you're looking for a green and orange piece, which would be maybe this one, green and orange. So I bring it down here, okay? Um, this can be solved like so, but again, you'd have to remember a mirrored version of the algorithm, and if that would confuse you at this point, um, you can't just rotate like this 
and solvent, okay, because it's the same color. The problem is your the piece you need is actually right here, okay? It's actually right here. So what we need to do is we need to find a way to remove this piece from this whole edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to purposely cut it and separate it from here. To do that, we need to find another piece that needs to be solved. So for example, I have yellow and I have red here, and I need to solve yellow and red. So let's look for the yellow and red piece. Here's a yellow and red piece. Okay, I'm going to look and I'm going to see if that works. Okay, that won't work. Uh, let's look for another yellow and red piece, which is actually, no, not there. Um, other yellow and red. Yellow and red. You've probably seen it, but I just haven't seen it yet. Yellow and red. Okay, so here's a yellow and red piece right here. What I want to do is I want to take that green and orange piece that had the problem, and I want to send it to this top layer here in order to cut it. So it's over here. I'm going to be cutting here like so. So I want to have that piece right up here. And I want to make sure it's lined up so that it can replace this one. Okay, so if I'm looking at it here, I need to cut it right here. And here's the messed up piece. It'll cut right here. Perfect. So I'm going to keep it in the back. Leave it in the back for now. And now I'm going to solve yellow and red. So cut like so. Send to the top. Okay, then we're going to look for orange and green. Here it is. Rotate. Rotate. Now this is going to come down. Bring this down and then cut. And now orange and green is free to be solved as normal. As you can see, I've solved a lot of the threes. Okay, in fact, all of the threes have been solved except for green and orange. Uh, the same green and orange we were talking about before. So I have the green and orange piece ready to go, and I'm looking for any other piece. I'm sure there must be another piece here. Okay, but no, they're all okay. They're all solved. Okay, some of them even more than three. So what's what's going on here is when we're solving this, we are turning this cube into a one strip, two strip, three strip, four, five, six. What this means is that this is a six by six cube now. And when we're reducing it to a six by six, that means we won't we will not run into the parity that you see in a seven by seven, where these two pieces can be flipped around. The reason we don't run into that is because we cut that piece in the way that I just told you right now, in, in the previous step. Um, now this is perfectly okay to fix, and we can send it up, and we can rotate and orient these pieces to never get cut. So we can go to three by three, uh, sorry, we can do three edges, and then we can do a fourth edge with no problems whatsoever. So let's do that. Well, what, I, what I mean is we're going to cut this here, okay? Then we're going to send it up. Then we're going to rotate. But see, when we rotate, this will get cut. So we're not going to use this one. We're going to rotate this one. And when we bring this one down, it won't get cut. So we can just do like normal. And now you have 3x3 three three completely solved. Not 3x3, three three, but the third uh, edge piece completely solved without interfering with any of the other edge pieces because you have so many at this point. So that means you can solve three without any uh, parity issues, and you can solve the fourth one without any parity issues. So let's try the fourth one, um, and let's see if we run into any errors with the fourth layer. If I'm not mistaken, the first problem you're going to encounter at this stage is when you're cutting and you're sending up, you don't have any junk up here to properly cut. Just for example, if I were to send this piece up and over, I could use this, but if I bring this down here, I'm going to cut this piece. Okay. Well, if I rotate again, oh, I can't mess up these. If I rotate again, I can't mess up these. So I'm kind of stuck. Okay. Uh, the best way to solve this is to flip one, two, three here, so that it's actually one, two, three here. And then this is the uh, garbage piece. You can do that to any edge you want by holding the, the cube like this and making it uh, like a V 
or an L shape, depending on how much you, what you think of it. Uh, one comes down and then up. So downwards and then back up and then back where it was. So one, two, and then three. So let's check it out. And then it'll be one, two, three instead. So one down, then back up, then rotate. Okay. And now your pieces are reversed. Instead of one, two, three, the same, you have one, two, three, the same. And now we can actually solve this section. So let's try it again. Yellow and red, I'm gonna cut right here, rotate it up, if the cube lets me, rotate up, then, nope, can't cut that. This one can be cut, bring that down, and solved. Okay, so that is the first error that you might encounter. It's actually pretty easy, and again, you've probably seen that before in the other cubing videos we have done so far. So now I'm going to keep on going, and I'm going to solve the rest of these. As you can see, one, two, three, four, all done, all around. But as usual, I have come to an impasse. You can see I have blue and red, I'm uh, sorry, blue and orange here, blue and white here, but I also have blue and orange here, and blue and white here. You've seen this happen before, and uh, we, we should know, if based on the other videos, how to solve this problem. But this does mean that we will have parity in this situation, because it has turned it into a 5x5 five five cube. Okay, So we're going to solve it in the same way that we solved the 5x5 five five edge parity, where two strips are incorrect compared to uh, you know a whole edge piece. So, to begin, we are actually going to turn this cube upside down. So instead of one, two, three at the bottom here, we're going to turn it like so, so that we have one piece at the bottom. Okay, uh, this should differentiate uh, this whole step uh, compared to what we've been doing in the past. So you can remember uh, the only time you want one at the bottom is when you're doing this parity fix. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring these three pieces over to meet this one, even though it's going to mess things up. So we don't want white on this side. We want these three pieces to go downwards so that it's blue, blue, blue. How do we do that? We know in the past, send this one up, rotate this front face, and then rotate the top face. And now, tilt like so, now we're back to this piece at the bottom, and we have blue, blue, blue. So this is the only time this is okay. We're making a backwards L shape here, okay? And now we're gonna solve this just like we've been solving all of the other edges with the intention of messing up one of these edge pieces, okay? So let's just do it. Uh, we're going to send this over. So starting here, we're going to cut the cube here, bring these two pieces over to meet this one. So cut like that. Now you have these ones mismatched, okay? Then we're gonna send it up, send it to the back. Don't worry about what's here, just bring it down. And then reverse the process, okay? Now you have messed up piece here, messed up piece here. And if I'm not mistaken, this should be where the messed up piece is. And there it is. So if your messed up piece is right here, after doing that uh, algorithm, that is the exact correct method to do it. It should be on your left side, right at the top. So we want it on this same face. They all want to be on the same face. So let's turn it once so that this top one's messed up, this is messed up, and this is messed up. All of your issues are on your front face. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, these pieces have to be in a specific position in order to solve this problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this piece, okay? We have yellow and orange. These one, two, three should also be yellow and orange. And yes, they are, okay? So if you're doing things exactly the way I'm doing it, with the same hand movements exactly, not with your right hand, with your left hand, if you're moving everything over here and rotating to the back, this one will match with this one all of the time, 100% of the time. OK, 
okay? So it does uh, limit the possibility of difference. Um, so that's good. So we have one piece here, three pieces here, okay? Um, blue and orange is actually going to be close to this. So this one here should be blue and orange. And I'm going to test and check, and yes, there's blue and orange. So one, two, three should go with this one. And again, if you're doing it exactly the way I'm doing it, it should turn out like that. And then finally, you have two pieces here and one piece here messed up, but they're the right color. They're the correct color, okay? And these are going to go with this one. And if I'm not mistaken, this should be blue and that should be white. And if we take a look, it is. So everything's still going according to plan. Just remember, this one matches up. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Uh, these things are slippery. Uh, so this thing should match up with these. This should match up with this. And then these three should match up with this one. Okay? If everything is going according to plan, you're good. Now when we're holding the cube like this, with the top messed up here, we're actually going to rotate 90 degrees. Okay? Now the cube's going to be holding like this. Hold it like this with this left hand, and most of these steps are going to be done with your right hand instead of your left hand uh, to help differentiate between um, a regular movement and this special movement. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this orange and yellow, and we're going to bring it down to meet the other orange and yellow pieces. Okay, then we're going to do a twist of this bottom face, okay? Then we're going to do a twist of this right face going down, and then we're going to bring the bottom face back where it was before, and then we're going to bring this piece back where it was before. And now you can see blue and orange is solved. You can see green and orange is already solved, and you can see the only problem you have left on your cube two pieces like this, and two pieces like this. In order to solve this parity problem, we're going to have to use the T-shape method that we've been using in all of the cubes since the 4x4 cube. So this is an algorithm that you have seen before and you should be quite familiar with by now. Um, to, the, to, the, to those of you who do not know, um, we are going to be doing T-shapes with the two strips that are causing issue with this cube. If you're wondering, the two middle pieces are in the correct position. The two outer pieces are in the wrong position. So we're going to flip only those two pieces. And in order to do that, we need a very long algorithm, but you can memorize this a bit easier just by thinking about the movements. So you're only gonna be, gonna be moving this strip, this strip, the top face, and the front face. Okay. Um, one thing to note about front faces uh, and top faces, whenever you're moving something two times, one, two. Okay. If you move it two times, you can move it clockwise or counterclockwise, and it's the same move. So it doesn't matter how you move it, but if I say move it two times, one, two, just do that. It doesn't matter how. You can go this way or you can go this way, and it won't matter at all. Okay. So we're going to be moving... Every time we move this strip, we're going to be moving the top face two times, okay? Every time we move this strip, we're going to move the front face two times, okay? And most of the movements are going to be for this strip right here, okay? So here's how we begin. Holding the cube like this, two error strips right here. We're going to move this one down one time. So let's move that down. Okay, because we move that down, we have to move the top strip two times. One, two. Now we can go to this strip over here. We're going to move it down one time. One. Okay, um, now that we've solved that side, we're going to actually move the front face. Every time we move this one, we're going to move the front face one, two times. Then the last move for this strip is sending it back up where it was. 
So let's move it back up one time. And then we're going to rotate the front. One, two. And that's it. No more front moves, no more of these strips. Okay? Now we're going to focus completely on this strip here. We're going to move it down. One, two. We're going to move it down two times. And because we moved it down, we're going to move this one two times. One, two. Okay. Now we're going to bring this back up one time. And because we moved it, we're going to move the top face. One, two. And then we're going to bring it back down one more time. One, and then we're going to move the top face two times. One, two. Okay, and if you can remember from before, you have a strip here that's a problem, and it's a problem all the way around, except for this piece here. So how about we take this messed up piece and line it up with all of the other messed up pieces. So let's turn it around. Now they're all lined up. And it's just a case of putting green where green goes, and green goes behind blue. So you need to move that strip one, two times. And there you go. All of your four pieces here are solved. And that is the first instance of parity that you have fixed in the cube. There will be at maybe one or two more instances of parity not sure which one you'll end up with. If you're lucky, you won't see any of them. But if you're unlucky, you'll run into both. So uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to solve these edge pieces, okay, and um, these edge pieces. Once we solve those, we're going to solve them in the same methods as we've done so far. So if we're looking for blue and yellow, for example, uh, where's blue and yellow? Blue and yellow piece would be maybe here? Yeah, here. Okay. Let's take a blue and yellow piece, okay? And we are doing the same thing as we've been doing this entire time, okay? Uh, let's look for another blue and yellow piece. That one, don't like that one. Wow, I can't find blue and yellow. Ah, here it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a blue and yellow piece, and we're going to line it up with um, blue and yellow. Here's blue and yellow. Okay, so rotate. Okay, um, blue and yellow doesn't fit here. So how about we look for another blue and yellow? Okay, blue and yellow here, blue and yellow here, and we just want to match it up. So again, we cut, send to the top, rotate once, bring it down, and then cut the top layer again, and we're good. So we're just going to keep on doing that until we solve this layer, and then solve this layer afterwards. As you can see, I actually completed not only this edge, but the other edge without any issues. Similar to the last phase when we were doing the same thing with one, two, three, four, we can do the same thing with these two, um, five and six. Because these are even cubes, uh, this will never have um, an issue with the parity like you'll see with these two inner strips right here. So that's great news for you. You have one parity issue solved. Now you have your edges completed and you've turned this into a 3x3 three three cube. So I think we should solve this just like a 3x3 three three cube. So we started with blue. Let's begin with blue. Okay, and there we go. Almost completely solved with a slight mistake in the middle there. Um, but you can see we have an issue here. We have parity. We have edge parity at the end of solving this cube. Our corners, luckily, were solved without any issue, but we gotta fix this. So in order to solve this parity, um, the, what, what you're looking at basically is 
one, two, three strips, but you're actually looking at a four by four cube. What do I mean? To, what do I mean by this? Um, basically, if you were to split this, you could split it here. You could split it again uh, by going to one, two, three, and one, two, three, and four. So you can see one, two, three, four pieces. So this is now a four by four cube, and four by four cubes can have edge parity right here. So let's solve this situation by um, figuring out how to do this. And if we treat these as two pieces, then we can solve it the same way that we solved it before with the T-shape and the T-shape. Okay, so let's do exactly that. We're going to bring these three, treating them like one piece, bring them down once. So all of them down once. And then we're moving the top one two times. One, two, just like before. Then we're going to take these three as one piece, bring them down. Then we're going to bring the front piece around one, two times. Then these three pieces again, sending them back up. And then rotating the front, one, two. Then these three pieces go down one time, and then two times. And then the top turns one, two. Then we just bring them up one time, one, two. And then bring them down one time. And then one, two, and then it looks equal, but this is the messed up piece. This is the messed up piece. So they're all messed up over here. Just got to make sure that we rotate these to make sure everything is messed up in the same strip. And then move it down one, and then two, and you've solved your parity. Now the only thing you have to do is make sure that all of these line up. And that's easy to do, no problem. And there you go. Your cube is now completely solved. You've solved everything. There was no parity, or you even solved the parity, and yet you still have this. You have one corner piece and one corner piece in the wrong position. They need to be swapped, but no matter how many times you do the algorithm from the 3x3, three three, it's never going to be solved. There'll always be um, either two here that are wrong, or maybe two here that are wrong, that are flipped. So this is the corner parity that occurs only in your even numbered cubes. So four, six, eight, and up. Um, in order to solve this, it's actually very easy. It's easier than the edge parity. So to solve this, all we're gonna do is um, two movements, three different times, okay? Um, three sets of the two movements. So we're gonna be moving a T-shape again, these downwards, and the top sideways, okay? Um, every time we move any piece, we're moving it two times in total. And remember how this is one, two, three pieces, just like a four by four cube. We're going to treat them like four pieces only. So this is one piece, and these three are one piece, okay? So here's what we're going to do. As long as, and this works even if the corners are like this, or if the corners are like this, okay? Um, as long as you have one messed up corner in this corner, you'll be okay, okay? So if you have, let's say, uh, this corner and this corner wrong, turn it so that this is a messed up corner. But we're gonna use this one. This is good, this is good, perfect. They're both facing you. You're going to turn this layer down two times. This is your first set. Go down one, and then two, okay? Then we're going to move just the top layer two times. One, two, okay? That's your first set. Second set, we're going to move this down one more time. Well, two times, of course. We're gonna move it down one, two, one, two, and then we're going to turn the entire top half of the cube one, two times. That's your second set. 
then the third set repeats what you did just now. We're going to move this down one, two times, and then this half one, two times. So here we go. Go down one, two, okay? And then rotate the whole top half one time, two times, okay? And now what'll happen is you're going to go a few steps back in the three by three process, wherein you have the red edge solved with the top here, the orange edge solved with the top here, but these two are messed up. So go back to the old algorithm and just solve the cube like normal. So you want to set the edges. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm doing the 3x3 algorithm. Uh, if you're not sure what algorithm that was, you can check out the 3x3 video on my channel and you'll find out. Um, so now we have uh, red and orange messed up. Now we're just going to rotate. Okay, so that blue and I believe uh, orange, yes, blue and orange are solved. And then we're going to do the same algorithm one more time. Okay, now with one more turn, everything is nice and organized. And all we have to do now is the final organization of the corner pieces. And if you did everything right, they should be fixed. So let's do it a few times and let's see if it's going to be sorted. And of course, these are all algorithms that you can find on my channel um, when you're solving a 3x3 cube. So as you can see, uh, red, green, white, perfect. Blue, orange, white, perfect. Everything has been sorted, and it's just a case of solving these like you would a normal cube. And of course, this is actually more difficult than it seems. An 8x8 is so huge, it's hard to move these things. One, this is okay. Two, this is okay. Okay. Yeah, this is pretty difficult. It always feels like the cube's going to fall apart. Ah. Yeah. But we're almost done. A few grunts and turns, and we will soon be complete. And there you go. One turn, two turn. Complete. Blue. Done. Everything complete. And somehow, some way, you have made your way through an 8x8x8 eight by eight by eight cube. Congratulations if you made it this far. Um, be sure to check out my channel uh, for further videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, uh, be sure to leave some comments in the comment section. You can like, you could subscribe, um, anything you want. Uh, we're going to be doing more puzzles after the 8x8, eight eight, so stick around, and uh, hopefully 9x9 nine nine will come out soon. If not, we can work on other kinds of puzzles as well. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.